Um, hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chen Li. Uh, today, I'll be talking about uh, large multi model models or LMM. Um, you all know that Chat GPT or multi model GPT 4 is quite popular nowadays. And today, I'll try to uh, help to build a minim minimal version of multi model GPT 4. And I think this might be an interesting topic nowadays. Um, for the rest of the tutorial, uh, Lin Jian and me will cover different ways to leverage large language model or LLM, LLM for multimodality. I'll focus on the end-to-end -end trained models and so that we can make uh, large language models uh, see the image and uh, understand the reasoning over it. Uh, this is today's agenda. There will be three parts. Uh, first, I'll talk about the background covering the uh, large uh, multi model models and the mo most importantly, multi model GPT 4. And then moving to the second part, uh, I'll, to prepare ourselves uh, on the necessary background knowledge, I'll talk about instruction tuning for language models. Uh, in the last part, I'll talk about how we, um, uh, how we do instruction tuning in the multi model space. Um, as a running example, I'll maybe talk about uh, Lava and how we uh, build the data of Lava, how, how we train the model. And then based on this, uh, we see that this is a quite hot, quite hot uh, uh, topic. Nowadays, I'll summarize the uh, papers proposed in the past three months and trying to give you some insights. Okay, let's start with the first part. Uh, the, the, the existing large models in the multi-model space. Um, I think most of the models, they share uh, the two, uh, the two things. One is a model architecture. The other one is a training objective. Um, in terms of the model architecture, um, I think th there are three parts, including the vision encoder, the language model, and optionally, we may build some trainable collection modules to connect the vision part and the language and the language part. In the, in the end of the day, what these models are doing is to uh, input the image and trying to decode it in or convert convert the image into a, a text sequence. In terms of training objectives, uh, most of the models share the same training objective, which is autoregressive loss on the language output. And in terms of the because all the models are built uh, based on transformers, and uh, in terms of the uh, attention map in the transformers, uh, they are using the cross attention image text uh, uh, cross attended uh, 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 image text generation uh, map, meaning that all the image uh, tokens attend to each other. And for the uh, text part, and the the te the, te the predict text token will condition all the images, image tokens, and the previous text tokens. Oh, by the way, I'll share the slides uh, deck later in our website, and so, so that you can get the, revisit the full, uh, the full material later. And so we, we have covered the training objective and the architectures. So uh, now let's use some examples, uh, how, uh, how existing work uh, uh, actually implement uh, those two things. And so as a first example, uh, uh, the models trained with, Im with image test pairs, uh, we are using two existing models. One is GIT, the, the, the other one is Belief2. And we see that um, for, um, the, the, they all have the three modules in terms of architecture. So for GIT, it is based on, the, for the image encoder is based on the contrast of trainer, trainer Florence model, model, and they initialize the weights from there. And they also uh, build a language model uh, for, from scratch on top of the on top of the visual uh, features, and they train the model end to end. And on the other hand, Believe2 was a proposal early this year, and they keep the language model, they keep the pre-trained uh, vision encoder, vision encoder, and the language model weights frozen, and they add the uh, uh, lightweight module called Qformer, and 
and, and the, uh, it turns out uh, those uh, bo this post post dropping approach is uh, quite sample efficient in terms of training samples. As a second example, um, so we also say a flam flamingo model. This is a uh, uh, multi model models that are trained on the interleaved image text uh, uh, data. Um, so uh, similarly, and uh, the um, flamingo model implement. Uh, 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 they also use a pre-trained vision encoder and a pre-trained language encoder, uh, language models, and keep this big, these two big models frozen. And they introduce uh, a, a, a con connection module. And there are two uh, important modules in, in, the, in the connection module. One is a perceivable, uh, perceivable response resampler. The main purpose is to reduce a com uh, computational com complexity. And the other one is a gated. Uh, cross and uh, cross citation layer or class a dense, dense layer. And the, the ma major goal is to sleep, sleep, sleep alive training in the initial stage of the training. So, uh, Flamingo has achieved a, a state of art performance on many academic research um, benchmarks. What I found the most uh, fascinating about Flamingo is the in multi model in context learning uh, property. Uh, uh, for example, when the model is trained, you can keep the model for, model weights frozen, and if you have any downstream tasks, you can provide a couple or several examples as image test pairs and input, and those shows illustrate uh, to the model that how, what type what type of task you actually want to perform in the inference in the inference inference stage, and then you provide your in, input image, and then uh, the model will learn to. Uh, Complete a task based on the examples you provided. I think I think the uh, this this flamingo model is widely considered as the GPT three moment in the multi model space. So now, uh, then earlier this March, and we see OpenAI release the multi model GPT four model, right? So, and even though we don't know the model details and the the, in the paper, in the uh, technical report, uh, OpenAI has shown several visual examples in terms of understanding and reasoning. And we all found uh, excited about uh, the capability that uh, uh, GPT-4 uh, is about to do. And so, for, for example, in, in, in the first, in, I think these two are popular examples now in, on the social media, right? So uh, the model can do some high, level uh, complex reasoning and it, uh, even even though we, we are excited about it and uh, uh, for for a little while we we the community the open source community have no clue that how open AI actually uh, train this model and achieve such capabilities and in this talk I'll try to uh, tell a little bit about uh, my understanding how we could actually uh, achieve these uh, results. Uh, to uh, better uh, illustrate uh, the gap between the existing models and the multi-model GPT-4, I use the uh, language model uh, history you know, from the OpenAI GPT families. And uh, uh, here I mainly illustrate the most interesting properties, the, the emerging properties I found for uh, I, I, I personally found interesting for each generation of their models. And for GPT-3, it is in-constant learning and chain of thought. And for chat GPT and instruct, or instruct GPT, and the most important property to me is instruction following, but it's, but it's still in the language domain. And when we, it comes to GPT-4, there's one additional capability, which is allow image input. In the multi-model space, and we, we say that if we consider Flamingo as the GPT-3 moment in the multi-model space, now we also have multi-model GPT-4, and now there's gap, right? And what is gap here and how we could possibly fill this gap? To me, I think this is instruction following and how to do alignment research to fill this gap. Okay. 
we we see that uh, instructing uh, instructing or instructing, instructing following capability is important, right? And how, uh, so to explain, I start with uh, in the I start with language domain because this is the notion of instruction tuning was designed first. So uh, let's use some examples. Those are the in, in NLP community, uh, how would people actually represent their data uh, traditionally? So I use, I provided two examples here. Uh, overall, um, tradition, uh, uh, people will always represent their data as synchronous input and a synchronous output, right? So in these two examples, one, the first one is kind of translation and second one is summarization. I did not provide any task instruction uh, explicit here, right, right? But if you look at data, you already uh, figure out uh, that the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the task instruction for each of them. It means that uh, in the traditional um, NLP setting, even though we have never explicitly specified the task instruction, the instruction is kind of implicitly uh, specified by the data. And uh, what people do, did is that they may train individual models on each type of data, right? And sometimes well, but they will merge the data together and uh, trying to do multitask uh, training. Uh, even with multitask training, they will never specify the task instructions in the training. It means that in the, type of, in, in the, in the inference stage, it's going to be very hard for the model to know what, task, what, what type of task the model will perform, right? And with this, it makes the uh, such trained model hard to generalize to unseen new tasks in the inference stage. Now it comes to instruction tuning. So instead of in, implicitly encoding this uh, task instruction, for instruction tuning, it actually expands the original data, right? Previously, we have the input output data uh, pairs. Now we expanded it to the uh, instruction input output triplets, and we, are, we augment the task instruction uh, and put it very explicitly as a part of the training data. So, for example, in the first case, uh, I'll add the uh, instruction translated into the simplified Chinese. And in the second example, how it's going to be summarized in 10 words of the input text, right? And those will be uh, part of the, in, uh, uh, this will be part of the uh, training data for model training. Mm. So um, and since we have explicitly uh, specified the training, uh, the, the instructions for each type of task, and then we put all of them together, uh, and the model learns which task it will do in the training. And in, in the inference stage, we will also uh, specify the task that we want the model to perform. And in this way, uh, it makes the, 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 the trained model uh, easy to generalize to new task. I provide another example here. So let's say in the training, we only have the task for translation and task for summariz summarization. And in the inference stage, so we provide a new task to the model, which kind of the task of combine the, uh, the translation and summarization. And this task is never specific, never uh, explicitly specified in the training, right? And because the model neural network can do a very good job in terms of generalization, and in this case, it's going to be task composition. And now we come to the new task and model can uh, understand this new task well and complete this task. I think this is the intuition of how instruction tuning works in the NLP. And this has been very successfully to make the model generalize well for their short and few short uh, tasks. So now um, we, we have seen the power of instruction tuning, right? And how we, we can, it can make the model better generalized to, new, to the unseen new task. Then the problem is, we see that the, the, the key is actually how we get the instruction tuning data, right? And there are, to me, there are two different ways to get the instruction tuning data. And first one is a human to human 
uh, in, interacting interacting way. For example, um, uh, in, in if you, if you provide it to some annotator, say, please provide uh, such instruction for such data, and then and then you can spend a lot lot of money, and then you can uh, spend a lot a lot, a lot of time to get uh, thousands of high quality instruction data, right? And so uh, this is a, this is generally considered as the time time consuming. And the other way is we can that we can use the human machine uh, interaction way to get to, to get the data in a more scalable way. And uh, most specifically, I'll talk about a self self instructed framework uh, to help us get the high quality instruction tuning data in the NLP first. And uh, previously, remember, uh, we have write uh, our own instruction data. One is a translation example. The other one is a summarization example, right? We could actually use this as seed examples. And let's try to leverage the power of in-context learning in GPT-3 and the GPT-4. And so because we have provided uh, these seed examples as illustration, and then we ask G uh, to, uh, a powerful language model to generate uh, a diverse set of instruction and its corresponding uh, uh, re responses. And in this way, we can iteratively uh, connect a large number of instruction following data. And this is how self-instruct work in NLP. Um, this idea has been very successful in NLP. And in the past uh, several months, you may have seen the uh, Llama family, right? Starting from the Meta Llama, and the, which is not instruction tuned, which is just a base language model, powerful language model. And to make it more instruction tuned, quickly in this community, you have seen a large number of Llamas, right? So um, the people use different uh, uh, type of instruction data and uh, train their model and then get to uh, uh, instruction uh, instruction to the uh, large language models. So there are many of them. I'll just uh, list uh, some of earlier versions. Uh, for example, Alpaca starting to use the teacher model. Uh, in, in Alpaca, the, the teacher model is GPT-3.5. Uh, GPT and and the, the, the famous Vicuna model consider shared GPT data, which is a high quality human and shared GPT data. And uh, then the GPT Alpaca, instead of using GPT-3 as a teacher, and uh, the authors use GPT-4 as a teacher. And there are many of them. Uh, and if you guys are interested in the uh, the most, most comprehensive way how to do self-instruct in the community, I will recommend this recent paper. The paper may be published you know, a couple of weeks ago, and this one shows a very comprehensive way that how uh, the, the model performance of this live research and how you do evaluation. Okay, and in terms of performance, and in the uh, in the NLP community, uh, people say that those uh, instruction tuned data they have show a very good chat ability, and sometimes it's getting very, very close uh, to the uh, chat GPT model, right? And it uh, makes uh, the community feel like with the open source tools, we could easily build uh, chat GPT very soon. And so how about uh, the multi-model space? So can we leverage the open source research uh, tools and build uh, a multi-model GPT-4 GPT uh, in an affordable way, in a more affordable approach. And today I'll use a Lava as a running example, and I'll talk, I'll talk to, with you how we could uh, create such instruction tuning data and how we train the model and what is the model performance. So in NLP, we have seen that self-instruct is very successful, right? That's because we have a good, very good teacher where the teacher always takes in language input and uh, output language as well. In the multi-model space, the question is, we don't have the public multi-model GPT-4 yet, right? We don't have a good teacher. 
And then uh, it, there's a unique challenge. Now, how could we leverage this language model only teacher to construct a multi-model instruction volume data? That is, that is a challenge, right? And in, in Lava, we uh, provide an initial way how we could construct such data and train uh, the multi-model uh, type agent. So um, let's first talk about the data. So even though we cannot uh, fit the raw uh, image for to into chat GPT or GPT-4, right? Because those, those language models cannot understand image. And so uh, alternatively, we can actually represent the image using its symbolic text representation. Uh, think about bounding box, think about uh, um, uh, cap captions, think about uh, whatever image understanding results we have had in the compute vision community, right? In the end of the day, we actually convert the image into some text representation or symbolic representation, right? So uh, I think uh, instead, is this actually give, give us a way to uh, represent the image into its text uh, sequence, right? And in Lama, we, uh, we specifically use the captions and the bounding box to represent the image. So uh, now we have, we, we could represent the image as the text, right? And now uh, I, I think in this way, we can still use self-instruct to construct high quality instruction following data. So what are in the instructions that we construct for the in the multi-model space? And you, in the future, you may build a, uh, whatever instruction you are interested. And in Lava, we start with three preliminary uh, instructions. The first type of instruction is a multi-term conversation because we want to build a chatbot, right? We're given the image, we can chat about it. And second type is the detailed description where we, we want the model to describe the image as detailed as possible. And one, make, one, one goal when we build this model, uh, we actually uh, want to force the model to generate a long sequence. That's, the, that, that's why we build, we build this detailed description uh, instruction. And, the, and, and at the last uh, uh, set of instruction following data, uh, we uh, construct uh, the complex reasoning instruction. Um, the, the reason is, remember previously, uh, and we have seen a couple of popular images from the OpenAI uh, technical report, right? And the, the model, the, uh, the GPT-4 model is actually able to reason over images, right? How about we reproduce those results? And so if we only use the previous two, it's very hard to, for the model to uh, reason over image, right? And so that's why uh, we iterate uh, several different versions. And it turns out uh, complex reasoning uh, instruction from the data is very, very important. So um, let me give you, give you one concrete example. And so um, for, complex, for complex reasoning, it's not about the image content. It's more about the implications of the image. For in this example, the image content is maybe a SUV in, in, a, in a parking area. And in terms of complex reasoning, we are asking the question, what challenge do these people face? And we see there is a SUV, there are many different luggage, right? And apparently the challenge is how could we actually uh, pack all this luggage into this compact car, right? So with this uh, machine generated instruction following data, we create a high quality instruction following data. And now let's talk about the model. And uh, so the, in terms of architecture, it's very similar to all of the vision language model I mentioned earlier, right? So there are three modules. You have the pre-trained vision encoder, you have the pre-trained language of by the way, in terms of vision encoder, we use a pre-trained click large. In terms of language model, we use the open source uh, Lama. And we all, uh, in, and in terms of the uh, uh, collection module, we use a linear projection layer. And uh, this, is the this is how we constructed the model. 
trade. So in term, uh, in, in now, how did how did we train the model? Uh, this is a two stage training procedure. In the first stage, we only update the projection layer, and on on the image text pairs. So the main goal of this stage is to align the two modalities. Uh, in, a, in other words, we can talk. We, we can we could consider about consider the projection layer is mainly doing visual tokenization, where you convert the image into the representations that the language model can understand. So in the second stage, uh, we are going to update the projection layer and the entire language model on the instruction following data we have created previously. And so in the main goal of this stage is to uh, um, uh, let the model understand different instruction, a lot of different tasks, so that in the, in, in the inference stage, if you provide a new task, the model can do task composition, can finish this new task. Now let's talk about the performance. And we construct a, a small evaluation data set. And the takeaway message for this uh, is that uh, LAMA model is able to achieve 85% relative score compared with GPT-4. And this is very close, but uh, don't take it seriously because it's a very small model on a very you know, uh, simple uh, cocoa images. And on the other hand, we also report the results on uh, established uh, visual reasoning data set called the Science QA. And the previous data is the multi-model chain of thought uh, paper from Amazon. And uh, so with LAVA, we train the, the uh, second stage, we train our second stage on the training set of Science QA. And when we combine with GPT-4, it helps us to create a new state of art on this data set. Now let's see some examples. Uh, remember previously I talked about the famous example, right? This image. And so with, with Lava, we actually just trained on a, a subset of a cocoa. And with this very small amount of training data, it turns out we could actually kind of reproduce the multi-model GPT-4 ability in terms of a complex reasoning, right? So the question is, what is unusual about this image? And the model is saying that there's a moving car and the, the man is doing eye running. Eye running is typically done uh, in, inside the house, but now it, it, it is done uh, in a moving car, right? This could be dangerous, something like that. And of course, if you are interested, you can continue to interact with Lava. We have a live demo online. And the second example, so uh, besides the complex reasoning I have showed earlier, it, it turns out the model should, uh, could also understand some of the uh, text uh, sequence in the visual image. And so if compared with the previous model, right? Uh, for example, belief to are open flamingo. And those, uh, those models, they are mainly uh, trying to describe the image content because this is the single task the model is trained on, right? You cannot expect the model to do more uh, uh, deep, uh, deep, deep, different tasks than its training. I'll show more examples after uh, for, 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 for Lava. So after uh, we train, after we release the uh, the model and and the demo, I trying to create some interesting examples for this model. And um, in this in this example, I upload the CVPR twenty twenty three logo to Lava and ask who will be interested in the content in this image. And the model saying that there are two group of people who might be interested. The first group is the uh, is people living in Vancouver, Vancouver, Canada, and the other one, the other group is people who are doing AI and its applications. Right, it means that the model can not only understand the text input but also uh, have some uh, internal knowledge uh, about what a CVPR is. In the second example, I upload the, the workshop, the computer vision in the wild. This is the workshop that uh, 
uh, in the first floor. If you guys are interested in the afternoon, you can go attend this workshop as well. And this is a logo for the, our workshop. And so we ask what the image is about. And turns out the model can uh, figure out that this is about the computer vision in the world. And I also uh, wrote a uh, uh, llama by myself and uh, uploaded to the image. It turns out the model can understand itself. This is a new word, by the way. So uh, with llama re release, so we have seen a lot of papers released in the past three months, right? Maybe on a weekly basis or sometimes daily basis, right? And the research pace is so fast nowadays. Um, so we all start with motivated by, you know, some of the private models such as Flamingo and GPT-4. But luckily in the open source community, we have a Llama model released by Meta and built on top of it, we have instruction tuned language models such as Alpaca and Vicuna. <coughs> so after Vicuna is, is released in two weeks, uh, uh, Mini GPT-4 and the Lava was, was, was proposed. And, and it actually enables those open source large, large language models to see and the reason over the image. And in, in, in maybe 10 days, and there are uh, newer models who are trying to compare with uh, Lava and Mini GPT-4. And uh, it, it seems that in April, the data points are relatively sparse, right? But in May, we see a lot of papers, right? And personally, I was amazed by how uh, hard work uh, this, this, this community is. And in June, and we still have this trend going on. So there are a lot of papers, a lot of models, and also some benchmarks. For example, those which uh, uh, on the uh, on the line are the benchmarks proposed by the community. There are a lot of papers. Uh, um, I also try to summarize uh, all the papers into different groups when I prepare for this tutorial. So you don't, if you, if you want to, uh, personally, I, I think I, I lost the track of all the papers if, before I prepare for this tutorial. And now uh, um, there are different topics. Uh, um, for example, um, multi-modeling class learning and trying to combine with established data set. And also people try to include more modalities beyond vision and language. Um, so I will try to highlight several topics. For example, more modality, right? Um, so image bind is a work that uses the image representation at the center and they are trying to include maybe video, audio and other modality. And because all of these different modalities, they share a common uh, latent space or feature space, and it's natural actually to extend uh, the llama like work uh, to uh, more modalities than vision language. And then Pata GPT is such a piece of work that extends to uh, more modalities. And we also have speech GPT, uh, where the model can take input of image and speech and output text and speech. Um, so remember, in, in when we built the Lava, we mainly focus on the uh, user-oriented tasks. Uh, for example, daily conversation. Uh, rem uh, I have to remind you guys that in the NLP community, when people are talking about instruction tuning, there are maybe two groups of work. One is instruction tuning for our, uh, uh, for user-oriented tasks, such as open AI models. And the other group is uh, instruction tuning for uh, academic research benchmarks. And so um, even though uh, people are doing instruction tuning and the, the goal is different. So when we build a Lava, we, our goal is mainly for user-oriented uh, tasks, 
but in the research community, in the Asian language community, there are a lot of academic research, uh, and uh, and they are all about well established Asian language tasks. For example, uh, captioning BQA, right? You can also rewrite such data set in the instruction following format and uh, join the train with uh, the instruction for uh, following data. And the uh, instruction GP uh, in, in, in instructed the leap is such a piece of work that uh, uh, combines these two types of instruction tuning data. So in Lava, we, we, the, the model is only able to take one single image as input, but uh, in the in, in the multi-model space, we sometimes we could we we have the applications with the multiple image or video, right? And then it is necessary to have a model that consider multiple image input. And, and in this case, it's going to be multi-model in class learning. And author is a, a one piece of work in this line of research that is take that allows multiple image input. And in the university labs, people are always complain that we don't have enough GPUs to, to train such big models, right? And luckily in the research community, there's a live research for called parameter efficient training, where they only uh, have, have a small number of trainable parameters so that you can train uh, your model with maybe eight GPU or one GPU and uh, if you if you do have very limited resource, uh, please check out the recent work from NLP community called the Laura. They they I think the most amazing thing is they could train a sixty five billion llama model in in one day with one GPU. So there are a lot of uh, models, right? And how do we do evaluation? And there, uh, there are benchmarks about the uh, uh, object hallucination, or there was a robustness, and the OCR, and some of the recent uh, benchmarks proposed maybe in the last one week. And the, uh, people are doing more and more serious research about this live research. So one thing I want to highlight is the OCR capability. So I know that even we do LAVA training, there is a no OCR data in the training, but it turns out the model can do zero shot task transfer for OCR, right? And there's a paper that trying to benchmark all the open source large language, the large multi-model models for their uh, OCR capability. It turns out uh, most, uh, all, all the models, uh, the zero shot performance is worse than the state of art, the supervised trained SOTA in the OCR uh, topic at this moment, but there's one data set that is different. Uh, that the open the zero shot performance of the LMM is better than the supervised data. This one is more about uh, uh, reasoning based on the OCR results. And lastly is application. So um, multi-model GPT-4, is popular, and we also see there are many vertical domains that require their whole uh, multi-model GPT-4, right? And the medical is uh, apparent, apparently one of the most important applications there, and the papers trying to apply GPT-like models to the uh, medical domain. And the LAVA MED is an extension of LAVA, where you train uh, eight GPUs for maybe 50 hours, then you get the LAVA MED model. And one interesting uh, observation is, even for the original LAMA model, the model is able to talk about medical image, but it's just like uh, some other ordinary person like me. I, I know it is a medical image, but I can talk. I cannot talk about the details uh, with with uh, uh, domain specific domain specific knowledge, right? If you ask me, for example, some clinical advice, I'll tell you I don't know. Similarly, LAVA is doing that. But if you train the model on the medical domain not, uh, data, then you will see that the model is trying to provide some helpful suggestions about to them the uh, medical question. 
So we have a lot of uh, open source efforts trying to uh, build building or surpassing uh, multi-model GPT-4, right? And so I would say that in terms of new capabilities, uh, we may see a chance that uh, the open source effort uh, may sometimes su uh, surpassing multi-model GPT-4, right? Because multi-model GPT-4 is not able to do image captioning, sorry, image generation, and there is a work that is able to do image generation end to end with uh, uh, GPT-4-like model. But uh, so I want to say that there is a really a large gap remains between the open source, open, uh, open, um, open, uh, open source efforts and the uh, true multi-model GPT-4, especially when we talk about the scaling success for a given capability. I'll give you, I'll give you concrete examples. So in a multi-model GPT-4 paper, we also show more complex reasoning results, right? For example, given the image, uh, given a paper as input, ask, uh, ask the, the model to summarize the paper. And apparently, it requires the model to understand uh, multiple high resolution, uh, high resolution image, and uh, it can, 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 it, it can uh, handle long sequence, right? When sometimes when uh, uh, it responds, we require domain knowledge. And all of this, it requires a large, uh, uh, large training or uh, more compute, and uh, this is not affordable for most uh, researchers. So what can we do next? I would say that uh, for industry labs with resources, please scale up and uh, study the emerging property. And uh, for university labs, maybe we should consider something like a prototype, small prototype like lava to, talk, to consider how we can enable new scenarios with new functionality or doing some evaluation. And to summarize, uh, our, I show you some of the powerful capability of uh, multi-model GPT-4 and how we could possibly uh, build the mini, mini version of the multi-model GPT-4 and some of the recent papers uh, on top of them. And uh, I'll release this uh, slide deck on the well, our tutorial website. Thank you.